Good morning, everybody. Welcome this morning. We're so glad to have you all join us. As we prepare to worship, let us rise to sing our praises to God. Stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working. 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, God is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, God is who you are. of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful and gracious God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors as we have not loved ourselves. For your sake, the Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Just want to welcome everyone who is here today. If there are any guests and visitors, please, um, you are welcome. And I pray and hope that your time with us today will be one in which you feel God's love and the grace of our community. Um, the table of Holy Communion is open to all baptized Christians. And we have a prayer quilt today that needs to be blessed and sent around to have your blessings. This is um, one for Barry. Barry Wilt. Oh, Jesus. I ask you to be with Barry and Sharon as they go through this difficult time. I ask that you strengthen Barry in his body and in his lungs, that he may recover fully. I ask your blessing upon this quilt, that this quilt be a sign of your love surrounding him, your strength upholding him and your peace around both him and his wife. O oh Lord, bless this quilt, and may those who will be blessing it as well
be your strength and your love to Barry and his family. Amen. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that, leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning.
The first reading today is from 1 Kings chapter 19. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. Second reading today is taken from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us all be guided by the Spirit. <clears throat> Please stand for the Gospel. According to Luke, Chapter 9, <clears throat> when the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messages ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, 
go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. These are the words of the Lord. Please be seated. Are there any children that I would like to come up this morning? It's okay if you don't. Quite all right. All righty. Okay. We get to sing instead. these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and whole empty handed but not forsaken I've been set free I've been set
got a light job, you've got all these disciples, I'm thinking, and those who wanted to be disciples, I think, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? These were not easy lessons this week, for me anyway. Do you ever ask God to smite anything, anyone, that you don't agree with Jesus? Do you finish your work? Do you honor your obligations? I mean, in these lessons today, it's like, oh, just, just leave. Come follow me. You've got a family. That's okay. Just follow me. I mean, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense to me. Sometimes the scriptures seem to ask to, to do the almost impossible or the impossible. Just drop everything. Just drop it all and go with Jesus. Yeah. These uh, scripture feet, um, readings are challenging, especially if we take it literally. And yes, there are those who have quite literally left their current life and chose to follow Jesus. We know those are the disciples. We know those. And then we also know that we mostly know them today as monks or nuns people who are cloistered in religious orders who really have left this world and have given themselves over totally to Jesus. But most of us are not so much called to that. We work in the real world. We may or may not have children or grandchildren. We have maybe parents we need to take care of or friends or relatives. I mean, we have a life that is different than from what these lessons seem to indicate. Ultimately, I believe what God asks of us, what God, as his modern-day disciples, is to keep our eyes and our hearts on him, because it's so easy to get distracted by all the stuff in the world. By the way, if you've ever gone to a, a monastery or, or a convent for a spiritual retreat, they are absolutely wonderful. They're not detached from the world necessarily because they read the newspaper and all that kind of thing. But if you just need a place to be quiet, a place to not be distracted by all the stuff outside, take a few days and just go on a retreat. It's wonderful. And many of those places also have someone that will help guide you through. Um, anyhow, I, I speak very highly of those. So, so this week, to be honest, I've been on a little bit of a dither, which is why these lessons were really challenging for me today. And I started thinking, well, what's going on? And I'm thinking, well, you know, it's been a kind of busy week in our country. Has anybody been paying, to the, paying attention to the news this week? You can nod your head. You can shake it. That's okay. I was like, what? I'm thinking, okay, there's the January 6th hearings. There are these three huge Supreme Court rulings um, allowing government funding available to schools of religious denominations, reducing barriers for concealed carry in New York City, which had been a law for like over 100 years, and of course the reversal of Roe v. Wade, which has been around for over 50 years. Like, okay, what else is coming next? It's like my world, and maybe for a lot of other people, has been a little bit shook. And in with all of this, 
public stuff that can affect a lot of people personally, there are also the very many personal and family concerns. We need to deal with inflation and high gas prices and illnesses and anxiety and grief and being in a congregational transition and concerned about finances either personally or professionally or within the congregation. I mean, whew, if my dad were alive, he would be shaking his head. My little five foot four, my five foot four inch dad, he'd be going, world's going to hell in a handbasket. He would. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. I love it. And you know, sometimes I've felt that way. I don't know if you've ever felt that way in the world, you know. If not this period of time in history, but maybe in another one. So, as followers of Jesus, how can we wade through all our thoughts, our feelings, the stuff that's going on in our world, the stuff that's going on in our lives, the stuff that is going on around in our own environment, How do we follow Jesus? I think it's easier in the peaceful times, in more stable times, because we aren't, our anxieties don't get going. But when we live in a time of unsettledness, which I believe we are right now, those whom Jesus, how do we respond to when Jesus says to these people that want to follow Jesus, and he makes these statements like, well, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go proclaim the kingdom of God. Hmm. Well, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom. I'm like, hmm. What are you going to do? You're in the middle of taking care of dinner. And God says, come. And he goes, no. Just, you know, you don't have to finish your dinner with your family. Just leave. It's like, I mean, it's like, to me, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense to me. So... As you can tell, I have struggled with it like all week. But so I started reflecting on this. And I thought, you know, I think those whom Jesus met in our gospel lesson for today wanted to follow Jesus. They really, really did. But they had some ends they needed to tidy up. And as I read it, and read it several times, I said, I don't think Jesus was chastising them. I don't think he was saying, well, you're not good enough to follow me because you're not focused enough. I don't think that is true. I think it was more like he, Jesus was telling those who wanted to follow him that, you know, to follow me, Jesus would be saying, it will be inconvenient at the least sometimes. It will be challenging at some time. There are going to be people that aren't going to like what you have to say sometimes. And you may get belittled or you may get, um, people will dismiss you. But I just want to let you know that it's kind of can be really hard. I just want you to let you know that. Hmm. Huh. Um, I mean, we live in a country where being a Christian, being a member of a, of a faith community, having a wonderful building, is accepted. And we happen to live in the South where Christianity is really accepted, more than some parts in the, or more obvious than you will find in some parts of the country, like parts of New England, where I grew up and spent a lot of time. Um, being a follower of Jesus is not unusual here. But living as a follower of Jesus is going to be challenging everywhere. So I thought to myself, hmm, what is a way that we can follow Jesus in our modern unsettled times and not find ourselves distracted by the stuff of this life, by the struggles of this life, by the real, genuine, and deep sorrows that we have in this life. I started thinking, hmm. Well, I 
um, I think God did this, I hope. But anyway, it was maybe we can fall in love with God again, with our Lord. Because I was thinking, well, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. That's what we need to do. We gotta need to keep our eyes on Jesus. And guess what? I have a book called Eyes on Jesus that I haven't looked at in a long time. But I looked at it and I went, this is perfect. I think this is perfect because this is one that has helped me. Um, and this sermon really isn't supposed to be all about me, but I'm sharing right now. So, What is one of the ways in which we can honor and follow Jesus? Here is a poem by a Spanish Jesuit, Pedro Arupe, who wrote this poem about finding God. He writes, Nothing is more practical than finding God. That is, than falling in love in a quite absolute final way. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination, will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, what you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love. Stay in love, and it will decide everything. In other words, we are invited to fall in love with God, with our Lord. And it's nothing is more practical than that. That is than falling in love with God in a quite absolute final way. What you are in love with, I think this is really important, what you are in love with will seize your imagination. It will affect everything you decide. What will get you out of bed in the morning and what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, what you know, and what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love. Stay in love, and it will decide everything. Any of you that have ever fallen in love knows what that's like. And Jesus asks us, invites us, and he calls us to just fall in love with him and let him decide how we live our lives, how we manage the tough And you know, when you allow yourself to fall in love with Jesus, you can let the troubling things that get you all tied up in a knot go. Because when you're in love, it's okay. Well, it's not okay. But, but when you're in love, when you are in love, the world is a place you can live in and bring life and peace to those around you. So I invite you, keep your eyes on Jesus and fall in love with him. And remember, when you may have fallen in love in your own life in the past, how you felt and how the world looked. And when you fall in love with God, all the Stuff in the world will not stop you. Amen. Please stand. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need.
God of faithfulness, set the face of your church firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, guide all those who govern that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all those who live under under tyranny or conflict. We lift up especially Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of kindness, Reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying or suffering. We lift up today the Bedford family, Don, Terry, Gary, families experiencing loss, and Barry. Uphold those who grieve, support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have no way to lay their heads. God of love, attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work toward health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our worship continues as we collect our tithes and offerings we've brought for God.
God of all creation, all that you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, to the great shepherd of your flock, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who after his resurrection sent forth the apostles to preach the gospel and teach all nations and promised to be with them even to the end of the age. And so with all the apostles and the glorious company of saints with choirs and angels and hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. All God's children are welcome. The table is prepared.
the kind of God you are. When heaven seems beyond my reach, you still see eternity in me. You're turning ashes into art, cause that's just the kind of God you are. It's in the empty tomb, it's on the rugged cross, your death defying love is written in your scars, you'll never quit on me, you'll always hold my heart, cause that's the kind of God you are, you gave me freedom from my sin, you told me I could start again, all I heard is dead and gone. Now we're your daughters and your sons. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. We once were lost, but now we're found. Forever you hold us in your arms. Cause that's just the kind of God you are. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you, and keep you in his grace. Amen. Announcements. Morning, everybody. Uh, just a quick reminder from the call committee that we continue to work on the minister site profile. But more importantly, we'd like to thank you, the uh, congregation, for your contribution uh, to us to help us in completing that profile. Your surveys were very important to us and while we realize this process is really slow, it is still working and ongoing and through pr our prayers and your prayers and devotions and the Holy Spirit, we will complete this task so that we can get uh, a new pastor here at Crossroad. Thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. It feels like I was up here like a lot, and now I haven't been here for a while. Is anybody getting really tired of this call process? Oh, you are not honest. Come on. <laughs> I know I am getting weary. At the beginning, you know, when Pastor Ryan left, we had all this energy, like, okay, come on, we're going to go forward. And now I feel like we're in a lull. You know, there was so much that was happening the first few months, and now we're about seven months into this process. And so this is kind of the time where it's normal to have a lull and to not see a lot happening. The call committee's working hard. They are in here every week. They are continuing to work on the mission site profile. That's like our dating profile. And... Um, it's not like one page. It's not like match.com. It's like 15, something like that. It's a lot of pages. It's a lot of pages With and it's print. a lot of data that they are compiling and putting together. And so, you know, please be assured that things are moving forward exactly how they're supposed to proceed, even though we don't see a lot of that on a day-to-day -day basis. So. A couple weeks ago, I was sitting and I was like, oh, I'm getting really weary of this. Like, it's just, it's been wearing on me. And so uh, I found a Bible verse that really spoke to me. It's from Galatians. It's chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And it says, and let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap. So then, if we do not give up, as we have opportunity let us do good to everyone, and especially those who are of the household of faith. So don't lose faith. Don't be weary. We're going to get through this, and things are going to work out exactly how they are supposed to work out for our mission here in Fleming Island. So thank you. Have a great morning. Thank you. Thank you. Holy Spirit's at work in here.
The Holy Spirit's at work. It just, this is not a simple process where there is a, um, an office that puts all that stuff together. They don't have a human resources like this in a regular congregation. Okay, it's a whole different process. So, what chapter? It was Galatians 6. Galatians 6, 9, and 10. Write that down, Galatians 6, 9, and 10. I think it's important. God's time is not our time. But, okay. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with a favor and give you peace. Amen. Salvation's waiting there You build a mighty fortress Ten thousand burdens high Love is here to lift you up Here to lift you high If you're lost and wandering Come stumbling in like a prodigal child See the walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open
by now Follow chain to the place I was sure your grace ran out I kept running and running and running You kept chasing and chasing and chasing A million miles of my mistakes So couldn't keep your love away However far away I am from home That's how Turn around.